Hi, I'm Jen Grice from JenGrice.com. I am a Christian divorce mentor and boundary coach. I help Christian women to reclaim their life after abuse and divorce. Today I am going to talk about um, what does psychological abuse look like. I grew up in a home where psychological abuse was present and it became my normal, <laughs> as my counselor put it. Um, and so when I dated and married psychological abusers, um, it just seemed all normal to me. But it was learning about what psychological abuse, talking to other women who had been through similar situations and hearing their stories that I was able to realize what was going on and heal from it. And so today I want to share what psychological abuse is so that others can learn what I have learned over the last several years. Some people call uh, this emotional abuse, but emotional abuse is a little different. Where emotional abuse um, sometimes is a little bit easier to spot than psychological abuse. Uh, examples really quick of emotional abuse would be name calling, threats, um, that sorts of things. Where psychological abuse is a lot more covert in the way it comes out. The abuser doesn't want his uh, victim or target to know that she is being abused. In 2012, late 2012, a friend of mine introduced me to a word called narcissist, something I had never heard before. When I was looking online, I found a lot of blogs and different websites that shared about uh, psychological abuse, but they seemed very dark in nature, a lot of dark pictures and, uh, you know, red and dark, black and... And it seemed very scary, and I didn't really feel like I belonged there as a Christian woman, like on these really dark websites. There wasn't too many Christians talking about this at all. But I kept reading and researching, um, reading every book that I can get my hands on. I had a Kindle, and I would download them and read them um, until it was safe to read them out in the open. Then in 2016, for my college education, I wrote a 40-page APA uh, paper about domestic violence in the church, and it was a Christian college, and I was really impressed that they allowed me to write such a paper. I had to get approval, obviously, and they allowed me to write it, and I actually did very well and got an A on the paper. And through that experience, I also learned a ton about the different types of abuse. And that's when I decided that it wasn't just emotional abuse, that psychological abuse was a little bit deeper and darker than just emotional abuse. So I share my wisdom with you in a hope-filled way to help others to get through and heal as well. Um, victim targets uh, survivors talk about um, and we compare stories and we often say that we feel like um, our abusers read from some sort a some sort of manual on how to behave. A lot of them use the same tactics or the same tricks to psychologically abuse. So I'm gonna give you a few examples. They lie they're usually pathological liars, and they lie about the dumbest things and some very big things as well, like cheating, uh, ha having porn addictions, other addictions, alcohol, or drugs. So they're going to lie about those and cover up those. And sometimes, especially if they're um, serial cheaters, uh, serial adulterers, they will lie to cover up and they will never divulge that they had had an affair with somebody. Um, most uh, wives, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends find out the, from the other woman in the picture the truth, but a uh, psychological abuser will not divulge that information. They will um, be deceitful and lie and cover up forever if they have to. They will gaslight people to cover up 
um, their tracks and continue this deception, oftentimes calling their victims crazy uh, to the victim or to other people just to keep covering the deception. So psychological abusers also um, use other people, term that I've heard on the internet as they call them flying monkeys, uh, referring to the Wizard of Oz. Personally, I don't have a name for them. I just, they're just people that get involved in the drama because they love drama or because people love to see a train wreck, so they get involved um, just to contribute in some way. I just usually call all these types of people toxic people or dysfunctional because they're not really um, living intentionally and thinking about what they're doing and how they're behaving or how they're treating other people or even how their past is affecting their lives. They're not going to be living and acting in a healthy way. So they're toxic. It's a healthy person or somebody who's trying to get healthy should really just stay away from them. So when you are with a toxic person or a psychological abuser, uh, you often feel very lonely, um, sad, depressed. Um, a lot of uh, feelings of anxiety um, and those kind of things, that's because you're usually set up to feel that way. The uh, abuser or toxic person will create situations and so that you feel that way. They will often isolate you um, from friends that want to help you escape. One example would be if you want to get your education and instead of, they might say that they support you, but instead of really supporting you, they will try to sabotage your um, schooling in some way uh, or be jealous that you're going to school because they, they don't want to either see you succeed um, and maybe in their mind they'll th that you'll be better than them or they don't want to take the time, want you to take the time away from them. With you gone in or focusing on schoolwork, that means they're left out and, you know, what if they're lonely or what if they're um, bored or whatever. In their mind, it's all about them. Another situation where a psychological abuse um, uses their tactics would be um, purposeful or shaming or ignoring members of family. I've seen this in a lot of situations. Uh, with a lot of ladies where it happens in an in-law situation where the psychological abuser will create problems between two people in the family, uh, whether it's their, their wife and their uh, own personal family. An example would be like a uh, mother and a daughter-in-law. So the abuser, toxic person, will say to his own mother, you know, my wife doesn't like you, and then say to the wife, my mom doesn't like you, which creates a problem. It creates a conflict in the family. And the because the um, psychological abuser doesn't want people to get along. Um, I've seen it in my own family growing up. Uh, my mother would say to me, your brother's mad at you, and I would say, why? what I do? I didn't do anything. I knew I didn't do anything. Um, and she'd say, well, because uh, he feels you have a better um, mother now, or that I spend more time with you and not with him, and, and that kind of thing. And that's, that's psychological abuse. That's, you know, tr trying to um, create problems between people that wouldn't be there in the first place. They do it out of their own, for their own security and their own preservation. Another thing I've seen and read about is how if you, um, say you do have an issue with a toxic person or a dysfunctional person, and you want to resolve that issue with them like a normal person would. You want to figure out what's wrong and why they're upset with you, or maybe they're talking about you behind your back and you want to confront them. Oftentimes, then the toxic person will then put up a huge wall and ignore you, um, deny that your feelings are true. They won't work to resolve the issues with you. Um, like in healthy relationships, you can say, you know, my feelings were hurt about uh, what you said or what you did. And the person would try to resolve, like, what can we do to resolve that issue? What can we 
Um, what can I do to make, you know, I am sorry for what I did and what can I do to make it up for you, up to you. Um, but in a toxic uh, psychological abuse situation, when you say to somebody, this, you know, situation hurt me and um, I, I want to resolve it with you, the, the toxic person then puts up a wall, stones walls you, uh, doesn't want to speak about it, or blames you. Your feelings are ridiculous. I don't know what you're talking about. You're the problem. I they lie. I wasn't talking bad about you behind your back. Uh, I I wouldn't ever do those types of things. And you know sometimes you have to kind of step back and go, okay, wait, what's what's the truth? What do you know to be the truth? And then if you look at the situation and, and um, see that, wait, I all I said was. This is what I believe happened, and my feelings were hurt, and it became this whole big thing. And that's when you know a toxic person who just couldn't handle speaking about a conflict or about an issue. Oftentimes when you try to act in a healthy way towards a toxic person, they will say that you're crazy, or you're ridiculous, or you're the problem when you're just trying to deal with the issue and try to get through it. Every relationship has conflict at some time. Um, the healthier people of the world work through that conflict and come to some kind of compromise, even if that compromise is that we'll have to agree to get dif disagree. That your feelings are your feelings and my feelings are my feelings, and we each have a right to them. But a toxic person, if you ever have noticed, they're not able to do this. Basically, the toxic person's goal in life is to make you feel unwelcome, um, unworthy, because they feel rejected inside. They want you to feel rejected as well. So they play hidden games. They use fear, obligation, and guilt to manipulate you. And really, uh, at the depths of their soul, they understand that they're playing these psychological games. They just don't want to admit it. Some of the psychological games are the gaslighting, lies and deception, blaming a scapegoat, and uh, mind games like triangulation. And lastly, I didn't speak about um, scapegoating, and every family, every dysfunctional family has a scapegoat. So growing up, I was the scapegoat for uh, several family members in my family. You know, I remember one time we rented a, a van and... Um, about 15 family members we went somewhere and in the van it got quite loud because that's what happens if you've been if you've been in a van full of a lot of people it gets quite loud everybody's talking about their own thing um and it was loud and I was screamed at in my face um that I should shut up that I was the one that was being loud and often when I was growing up I was called a loud mouth um maybe it's good that I was a loud mouth because now I run my mouth on the internet um, but, you know, at the time, it was very hurtful that I was blamed for the loudness in the vehicle, when in actuality, it was just how it was. It was loud. Um, instead of asking kindly, you know, can everybody tone it down a little bit, I'm getting a headache, or whatever the case may be, this person chose to scream in my face. Um, and at the time, I had no idea, one, that that was wrong, and I should have said, you don't speak to me like that, um, and you don't blame me for everything, to have boundaries. Um, but I, and I also didn't know that, that I was in that type of situation where I was the scapegoat for family members. And it was through my healing after divorce that I actually figured it out. So that's why I think that divorce is the best time to really evaluate your life and dig deep into your own life and your own past and things that had gone in, on during your marriage or before your marriage or in childhood that have left you vulnerable to a psychological abuser um, because they target people that would think that their behavior is normal when in fact it's not normal at all. And by your left feeling low and unloved and uncared about and unworthy of love after dealing with and living with a psychological abuser. 
So before I go today, I want to share a couple books that I have read through that I suggest if you're looking for some more books on psychological abuse. I shared in one of my other videos um, this book, um, The Wizard of Oz and Other Narcissists, is a good one. Um, this is a very, this is one of my favorites. You can see, well used. Um, Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft. Very good book. Uh, if you're wondering if you have been in abusive situations or uh, married to an abusive man, this is a good book. Another one is Emotional Blackmail. Um, when the people in your life use fear, obligation, and guilt to manipulate you because that's what a psychological abuser does. They manipulate you into getting their way. That's basically what it is. And lastly, um, another one by Lundy Bancroft is When Dad Hurts Mom, Helping Your Children Heal the Wounds of Witnessing Abuse. This is a good one if you are uh, divorced or separated or um, from a male abuser. So I want to thank you for joining me today um, in this video. And I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or uh, go to my website, jengrice.com, and sign up for emails, and I answer all um, emails from readers. So if you sign up for the um, email list and email me back a question or comment, I, uh, I get them daily, but I take a day and just answer them all. So I'm here for you, and I hope that you are working on your healing and getting healthy. I'll see you next time. Thank you.